the Pleiadian mission a time of awareness part 16. The story of Saint Germain. The man known as Saint Germain was born under the star sign of Aries into the family of Rakoji in the year 1711 in Colonia, known today as Köln, in West Germany. He had the title of Count Saint Germain. He became friendly with a power group called the Rosicrucians, who were interested in his ability to influence people of power, such as kings and nobles. Since he was a man of few morals or scruples, he began to work for the Rosicrucians in order to gain control and power. Using illusion and deception that was not understood by many of his time, he could easily have his followers into believing he was a man of great magic who could live for thousands of years. Being particularly good at magic and alchemy, it was easy to beguile the simple minds of the people of his time. Saint Germain never became a member of the Rosicrucians, although he claimed to have attained the high ranking of a member of the seventh beam, which means he would have been an initiated one. In actuality, he was nothing more than a sleight-of-hand artist who was good with chemicals, which allowed him to produce a glare gold, using certain chemicals on metal. He would hypnotize women of importance and get their secrets, then wake them up and tell them what he knew about them, causing them to marvel at his supposed abilities. They had no idea that they were being hypnotized and used so easily. He would even convince some people that he could become invisible, since the people of the time had no idea of the power of hypnosis over the conscious mind. To further enhance his image, he claimed to have traveled to China, which was not true. He actually only went to Berlin to report to the Rosicrucians. This was a splinter group, for the main group was in Vienna. The Rosicrucians used alchemy to make him look younger so that people would believe that he was really timeless and would live forever. After his death at the age of 73, the Rosicrucians found people who looked like him and altered their faces to keep the myth going. The Pleiadians tracked down his spirit, and found that the man who was known as Saint Germain is currently reincarnated and is living in Germany. Are there any Pleiadians working with our government? According to the Pleiadians in 1975, no government is in contact with ETs on a regular basis, and there are no Pleiadians working in government positions. To begin with, the Pleiadians, as well as most other races that come to Earth, have no authority to interfere with the political or power structures on Earth. The alliance of planets that they belong to forbids this. They have a policy of non-interference as long as the inhabitants of a planet are not technically advanced enough to leave their own solar system. There are, of course, some races that come to Earth or pass by who do not belong to this alliance, but they have no interest in the affairs of our planet and they would be discouraged by the Pleiadians and other races anyway. The Pleiadians do not interfere or work with any governments. If they did, there would be no need for secrecy. Their mission is to help the beings of the planet, not individual organizations, self-appointed governments, or political leaders. Also, if they were involved with governments, the military would not be so busy hunting for their beamships. It has been almost 20 years since the Pleiadians commented on this, and things are different today since the American, Russian, English, and other governments have all come in contact with ETs from different systems. It is unfortunate that none of them, except the Belgian government, have decided to share what is going on with the public, but the time is rapidly approaching when the secret can no longer be kept, as thousands of people all over the planet are having contacts of their own, and the truth is coming out. Do any Earth governments have beamships? As far as the beamships are concerned, several Earth governments have been working on their development for many years. These are not really beamships like the Pleiadians have developed, but they are equipped with explosion-type motors, or with a kind of drive system that has a thrust effect. The first ship of this type was developed in February of 1941 in Germany under orders from Adolf Hitler. The first flight of the craft attained altitudes of over 40,000 feet, with speeds of over 1,200 miles per hour. If the Germans had been able to perfect these craft and get them into the air, they would have made a decisive difference in the outcome of the war. At the end of World War II, the ship was destroyed so that it would not fall into the hands of the enemies, although some of the plans for certain parts of the ship were taken, and other governments started work on these flying discs after the war and still continue today. The test flights of those flying discs are sometimes seen by individuals who believe they are looking at extraterrestrial craft, and are not aware that they are man-made. 
The size of the Earth-made ships is normally 300 feet in diameter, and they do not fly very well. They cannot leave the atmosphere and are confined to low altitudes on Earth, in some cases emergency landings have been made because of faulty equipment. This has been a serious health problem in some cases, since many of the craft now being developed use atomic power and give off radiation which is harmful to those who come in close contact to it. In events where this has happened, the pilots of these craft usually seize any witnesses and threaten them with harm if they should tell anyone of the incident. Or they will say they are from other worlds, and pretend to be extraterrestrials that will kidnap the witnesses and take them away if they speak about what they have seen. Since most Earth people can be so easily controlled by fear, this method has worked well to keep their secret, and there are many Earth beings that are quick to believe that extraterrestrials are visiting Earth and would gladly go along with this story. While there are certain evil-minded extraterrestrials that do come to Earth and occasionally kidnap Earth beings for study and experimentation, most of the kidnappings are by Earth craft, using the people for their own devices and study. Certainly most of the sightings and observations reported are of Earth craft. It is very unfortunate that men of Earth have such little respect and love for each other, for there are many cases where Earth craft have pretended to be sent by God or that they are angels on a mission, then exercise control over Earth beings to do their will or perform certain tasks for them. In some cases the makers of these earthly craft have tries to control public knowledge this way, by telling the Earth contactees that they are ETs and giving them information to tell the public that is not true. This is most common with religious messages. Since the Earthman is so easily controlled by the message of God, it is easy to make him believe that he is having contact with God's own messengers, or that Jesus is on board the craft, and has chosen them to speak for him. This is very unfortunate, since the well-meaning Earth contactee does not know any better and is being used by his fellow man. There is also no truth to the story that the Pleiadians or any other race have come to save the Earth and create peace. This is probably the most harmful thing to tell people, since it only builds up false hopes and serves to enslave the thinking of Earth people even more by making them think that someone else is going to save them or create the long-awaited peace, while they do nothing to create it themselves. The Pleiadians, as well as all other races that they are in contact with regarding Earth, would never do this, for it is not their responsibility to control the future of any race. They care about us like distant relatives because we have common ancestry, and they love us as they do all creatures of creation, but they will not solve our problems or control our destiny. We must follow our own path and take 100% responsibility for ourselves and our world. It can work no other way. Life forms in our universe. Here on Earth there is probably no bigger question than whether or not there is life on other worlds. It challenges our belief systems and poses the deep question, are we alone? It is probably a good idea that we have not been exposed to the answer yet, for until we reach a stage of development where we can live in harmony and use the technology necessary to get there with responsibility, we probably wouldn't properly understand what we would see anyway. The possibilities for societies of different morals, philosophies, and customs are endless, as yet we have not even been able to get along with our neighbors here on earth who merely look, dress, or speak differently. So, as in all things, we need to take one step at a time and get our own house in order before we go visiting someone else. Pleiadian science, along with information that they have learned through their contacts with other races, can give us a picture of the development of human life throughout the universe. The planet Earth was one of 40,353,607 planets that naturally developed with human life form during the course of its evolution. As billions of years of evolution went by and race after nice developed and spread out into the universe, proliferation of the human form began. Currently in our galaxy alone, it is estimated that there are over 7 billion 500 million planets that support various forms of human life. The Pleiadians have come in contact with 1,800,000 of them and found 343 different variations of the human form. The differences come in the number of fingers, eyes, skin color, height, etc., but all are erect homo sapiens as we would classify them on Earth. As we move out into free space and explore, we will begin to come into contact with some of these races and will discover there is a large family of men extending to the depths of the universe. Future Visions and Pleiadian Prophecy Billy's Home, 
The Sinjay Silver Star Center, is located up in the hills among beautiful, rolling countryside with deep valleys filled with clouds that miss the beautiful vegetation, making everything seem fresh and alive. Taking walks in the forest around the center was a particularly enjoyable pastime for me. There is a little road that passes by the center and leads off into the woods where I could easily be alone for as long as I desired. Large trees and lush shrubbery filled with nature's little creatures lend to the magical feeling that permeates the Swiss air. I had a couple of places that I liked to go that weren't too far into the woods, but distant enough to feel alone. My favorite time for forest sitting was late in the afternoon as the sun was starting to go down. The sunlight would be breaking through the all trees and creating dancing lights that frolicked across the ground like small children playing. I often spent an hour or two sitting in this beautiful, serene place, just bonding with all that was around me. I had been at the cinder for a couple of months, and my head was filled with new ideas for my mind to assimilate. Here in the forest was a great place to be at peace and commune with nature while working out man of the questions I had. Billy, Bruni, Silvano, and many of the other members of the FIGU had all been very kind to me over the past few weeks and shared with me their hearts and their minds. I was very thankful, and I had a lot to think about. One of the really nice things about a forest is the great energy that it contains. It's a wonderful place for personal reflection because the energy of nature helps you raise your consciousness and spiritually bond with the universe. I was very interested in connecting with the future to see how the knowledge of what I was learning would fit into the world. The Pleiadians had made such an effort to bring us knowledge in so many areas, and I had to think that the future could be changed for the better. Visions of the future, daydreams, and unexplained flashes of ideas were common to me, as I always welcomed information from different realms. As a child, I learned how to open myself up to seeing future events. I believed the future was being created by the present, and we could foresee what we were creating if we so desired. To me a future vision was nothing more than a glimpse of what my spirit was planning for my material self to do, and I always enjoyed watching. My times in the Swiss forest helped me work out the meaning of what I was learning about the coming times of change for man on earth. Besides, something rather peculiar was happening within myself. I was having vivid daytime dreams and visions that seemed to deal with what I was learning. I was very drawn to the history data. Somehow it seemed a little familiar, but not like I had been there. It just seemed to make a lot of sense to me, as if I had already known about it. My feelings were getting stronger all the time about my attachment to the Pleiadian mission. Bruni had suggested that perhaps I was of Lyran descent and had come to Earth many thousands of years ago as a rather violent warrior. Possibly this was all true, as my visions were all very strong and vivid and seemed to occur in real time, which is indicative of future or past visions. They weren't fleeting daydreams of ideas or feelings, but real-time remembrances, like I was there living the moment. Sometimes they would last for several days, like a movie running in the background while I was doing other things. I was using a routine of mental exercises to cause these visions that I had learned when I was a kid. It was a game I would play with my mind that would allow me to turn off the physical world and tune it into other realms of consciousness. The game was my own invention and is a little childish, but it does produce results. It was certainly working for me with the Pleiadian material, for I was doing more remembering than I was learning. Almost everything I would read from Billy's contact notes was easy to understand, as if I had known it before and was being reminded. Even the concepts of space travel and the structure of the universe seemed like things I had known before but had somehow just forgotten. None of the concepts seemed difficult or profound, but instead had a very strong ring of truth about them and were serving to open up my mind. I was enjoying a frenzy of learning and awareness. I would find myself a comfortable spot in the woods out behind the center and spend a few minutes relaxing and enjoying the scenery. My mind would start to wander and become attached to the trees the wind, the flowers, or whatever was around. I would begin to lose awareness of my conscious, physical self and slip into a waking dream state of observation I begin with taking three deep breaths very slowly, holding each one in for a moment and then releasing the air very slowly. This served to calm the body down and begin the focus of attention on the breath, which is directly connected to the life force. 
My attention to breath got me in touch with my life force as it flowed in and out of me. After taking the deep breaths I would feel a calmness and tranquility come over me, which allowed me to begin the move from my conscious mind to my subconscious. During my stay in Switzerland, I used the routine that I developed when I was a kid since it had always worked for me. I used it to tune into when I was learning. Here's how it works. It is my intention to let my mind go traveling without any interference from my physical self. I assume the role of an observer, like viewing a movie. I see myself walking into a small movie theater with just a few seats. I sit down in the middle seat of the front row. I'm the only person in the theater, it's very dark and quiet, just like a normal movie house. When I sit down, I notice that the movie screen is very large and white. It's only a few feet in front of me, and there is a large red knob just below the screen that turns it on. I have programmed myself over the years to know that once I turn the red knob, the movie will start, and I can observe whatever is playing that day. Sometimes I will just turn the screen on and watch whatever comes on, or maybe I will want to continue a movie I have seen before, or perhaps I want to know something from the past or future, it's all there. There is a brief pause as I tell myself very firmly, now, I will turn the red knob which will start the movie, and no other thoughts may come into my mind. I put myself in the role of an observer, who may only watch and not participate. This is very important because if I allow any of my own thoughts to come in or influence the movie, the information cannot be trusted. I have also discovered that if I interject my own thoughts into the movie, they will usually be thoughts that are wishful thinking, desire, fear, or ego from my conscious mind. The movie screen must become a source of information to be observed only. I take a brief pause to get ready, and then reach forward and turn the red knob. Now I sit back and enjoy the show. Once the knob is turned and I'm in the observation mode, all attention is on the screen. No other thoughts are allowed. If I feel a thought creep in, I order it out immediately. It's important that I have strong discipline with myself if this is to work. The process of putting myself in an observation mode with no outside thoughts is very rewarding, for my subconscious and then connect to outside knowledge of the past and future and creates a movie for me that I have never seen. If I let my own thoughts come in, it becomes daydreaming and wish fulfillment, and that's not what I'm after. The screen is usually blank for a minute or two, but I keep my concentration on it with no thoughts. The trick is to go blank and wait. I just concentrate on the white screen, with no expectations or involvement. Soon the screen will start talking to me in sound and pictures, the movie is beginning. At first it may just be a flash of light or a passing image. Whenever something starts, I make sure I'm watching with that same feeling that I have when I watch a movie for the first time. I don't know what is going to happen next, I am just an observer and I am not going to get involved. If I make no attempt to add any thoughts or direction of my own I'm in for a pleasant experience of creative thought. As the movie begins to show itself, it may not be recognizable at first, especially if I ask myself to see something in particular, like a past life or a future vision. But I remain in my observation mode and things get better. It's very exciting as I realize that I am seeing things for the first time. My subconscious mind is actually creating images for me and drawing information from different sources including my past, my future, and my higher and older self, other life forms could also be sending me an impression or two. In my case, I was interested in the Pleiadian information, so I pre-programmed myself to see anything in connection to the Pleiadian contacts. I was happy to find many new images relating to my childhood dreams of the great, white-haired warrior who seemed so familiar. I had related these dreams to Billy and Bruni and was told these were the images of ancient Lyran warriors. These dreams were common when I was a kid, and I had never made any connection to what they might mean. But here in the woods of Switzerland I was once again back in ancient times, somewhere on a faraway world, fighting great battles with high technology. I was very tall, around 15 feet. My body was thin, but well-muscled. My long, white hair hung halfway down my back and served as a flag to the men who followed me, for I was always on the front line leading the charge. I could feel an attitude of invincibility as I pushed forward with no fear. 
my arms were covered with bracelets of technology that obeyed my mental commands, firing tremendous weapons of destruction. I moved forward slowly, burning the air and ground in front of me as another world fell under my attack. Overhead were the large, flying warships that would soon land once my men had taken control of the situation. There had been many worlds succumbing to the forces of my power. I led the way for my race to dominate hundreds of worlds and control the galaxy. Childish dreams, perhaps. But my movies tell the story of ancient Lyra all too well. Forty years before I had ever heard of the Pleiadian contacts or read Billy's notes, I had already seen much of the Lyran history without knowing it was connected to Lyra. Here in the Swiss forest, my daydreams were connected to a past that lay deep inside of me somewhere. I had dreamed all of these thoughts years ago when I was little and they were still with me, but more vibrant and in-depth than ever before. I returned to the forest whenever I could to create more movies. The more I did this, the more in-depth the movies would become. They were serving as a teaching mechanism to allow me to work out new ideas and concepts that I was learning. I could play them out here on my movie screen as real experiences. It was very stimulating when the movie was so vivid and so many things come to me from out of nowhere. Many of my movies were seeing Billy having contacts with the Pleiadians in their beamships. I world feel like I was eavesdropping on their conversations, and sometimes wondered if I was really there. Quite often I would be concerned that Billy and Sim Jace might be able to sense my presence. Sometimes it seemed so real that I thought I might be able to join in the conversation. On several occasions I would get direct images from the Pleiadians in the form of thoughts or ideas, which would encompass entire concepts or ideas for me to think about. The fact that I was keeping my own input out of the movies made it exciting for I was sure the ideas were coming from a source other than myself. The contact notes were starting to feel more and more like experiences that I had lived or experienced before. I felt no connection to the Pleiadians themselves, I have never had the idea that I may have lived on a Pleiadian world or actually had any physical contact with them. It was just that the stories, ideas, and concepts that they talked about all seemed so familiar. I must have had some involvement at some level somewhere in the past for all of this to seem so real and easy to understand. The Future Movie Since I was very interested in the future, many of the movies I would create were about the events that were going to happen on Earth. Some of the more interesting ones were about events I saw happening over the next 20 to 50 years. Here are some of the future visions that I have had. Community The problems of running America will become too much for the government. They will not be able to maintain control much longer. Small communities will appear in rural areas that refuse to follow the federal system. They will make their own rules, for survival reasons. These communities will produce new inventions in energy and health control that have been suppressed for years. A community system of barter will spring up, as well as the issuance of new community money that becomes the denomination for this new culture. New forms of local government will be invented that really are government by the people, for the people. Politics the end of more than 200 years of American politics is just around the corner. I see politicians fleeing the cities and even the country as Washington is overrun by angry mobs. An attempt will be made to use international troops to hold off the angry mobs, but it won't work, and the government will fall. A new constitution will have to be created so the people feel like a new day is coming. Scandal will rock the country as the public discovers how the rich have bankrupted America and taken the money abroad. Several rich and powerful people will be killed in public by angry and outraged citizens. A secret room will be discovered under the White House that will expose how the American people have been lied to over the years. It will contain the secrets of how John Wilkes Booth escaped after killing President Lincoln. Other secrets involving World War II, President Kennedy, and George Washington will be discovered and brought to the public. Flooding. A tidal wave will hit Southern California and wash over Long Beach. The wave will be several hundred feet high and will extend completely out into the desert, leaving Palm Springs underwater. A new waterway will be formed from the Salton Sea all the way to San Diego. Most of the water will recede and leave Los Angeles covered in mud and debris. Those who survive the flood will try to save the city and begin to clean it up. This is a bad idea because after they clean it up, the city will be hit again by earthquakes. 
war with aliens. There will be a steady increase in the sightings of alien spacecraft, so many that the government can no longer hide it. There will be a mass sighting near a military base, and the American Air Force will shoot down one of the alien craft. The ETs will react and wipe out most of our air bases all across the country. People will be screaming and the night is large, round alien craft will be floating over the cities of America. Many people will disappear. The alien activity will not last very long because peaceful ETs like the Pleiadians will run them off. The Islands of California Over the next 30 years a series of floods and earthquakes may leave the southern half of California split up into several islands. The disaster will come at a time when the fragmented American government cannot help. Southern California will decide to leave the Union and be the first state to become its own republic once again. It will soon be joined by the northern part of the state, and the California flag will fly over its new capital in a small town somewhere east of San Francisco. The new Republic of California will flourish once it is on its own. New breakthroughs in energy, communications, and health will be manufactured in the new Los Angeles, built in the Mojave Desert. These products will provide free energy for man and eliminate disease and increase the life expectancy to more than 150 years. News of these breakthroughs will spread around the planet and change the way we live on Earth. This new republic will be the role model for a new generation who will be the leaders of Earth by the year 2050. Uncovering Ancient Cities Ancient cities under the ocean will be uncovered that existed over 10,000 years ago. Written documents about our history will be discovered, as well as drawings and plans for weapons that were used at the time of Atlantis in Egypt they will discover more underground rooms under the Sphinx, containing treasures and information that will tell us about life on Earth for the past 12,000 years, causing anthropology to be rewritten. Giant tunnels will be found in South America, leading to still-inhabited cities which are thousands of years old. The End of New York New York City is hit with a series of disasters, beginning with more terrorist attacks that ruin the subway system. Earthquakes in the Atlantic will cause flooding that will roll over Manhattan Island, Queens, and Brooklyn. The city will be underwater and will have to be abandoned. Its ruins will stand for years, since there is no way to reclaim the land. The tops of the Empire State Building and some of the other skyscrapers will still be sticking out of the water and will become small cities for the homeless who live by sailing small boats to shore for food. Accidents in the sky with technology During testing of high defense systems in orbit around Earth, there will be an accident that will ignite the air, causing the fire to be seen for thousands of miles. The atmosphere will be burned and unbreathable for years. The infected air will float around the planet, causing major loss of life and many new diseases. Other countries will rise up in anger at the apparent stupidity of the U.S. military. The food goes bad. The oxygen content of our atmosphere gets so low that our food no longer has much nutritional value to it. People will survive off of food grown underground or in water. The process of photosynthesis will become so weak that trees and plants cannot make enough oxygen to keep us healthy. New diseases will flourish that we cannot fight, and people will be left to die where they fall because everyone is afraid to touch them. The oceans will become lifeless pools of death and cease to supply us the oxygen we need. Panic will break out as millions starve and kill each other over food. Underground cities. Governments and military will hide out in the huge underground cities that they have been building for years. Their plan is to ride out the difficult times and take over the surface later. This plan backfires as earthquakes destroy most of the cities. It is discovered that the secret government has been covertly building cities on Mars for years, but that has backfired and almost everyone there is dead. Giant Space Platform Once California becomes a republic, science flourishes under the new leadership, and they launch a huge space city in orbit around Earth. By the year 2030, thousands will live there in an effort to make sure the human race survives. It is eventually decided to use the great power of the space city to stop the many wars that rage on Earth. The new government of America is still failing, and Europe is ruined. Peace comes to man finally, and everyone agrees to let the space city become the new government of Earth, for they have the technology to survive. No one argues because they have no choice. Contact with peaceful aliens. Around 2050, 
when man has survived and is rebuilding his society, we will make peaceful contact with other ETs like the Pleiadians. We will then be a planet of higher consciousness guided by spirit and love, and will continue our move into the new age. The old paradigms of military and politics are gone forever and only exist in the history books. Conclusion I would remind you that these future visions are only my own and do not reflect the prophecy of the Pleiadians. All of these visions were seen by me and are more logical than they are prophetic. I would encourage you to practice the process that I use and connect yourself to the future and see for yourself. The future is only what we create it to be, so ask for enlightenment, and answer how you can contribute something useful to the transition our civilization is in. Prophecy and Predictions During the three years that Billy was in contact with the Pleiadians, they put him in touch with highly advanced beings of consciousness that transmitted to him prophecies about coming events on Earth. Some of the prophecies are from conversations, and some are received in symbol form through spiritual telepathy. Billy also created several predictions himself that are the result of his own calculations. The transmissions from ETs and higher spiritual levels have turned out to be more accurate. Billy received them in a spiritual language of symbols and then translated them into our language. Before going any further, let me explain something about prophecy and predictions that Billy taught me. There is a difference between a prediction, created through the use of numeric calculations, and a prophecy, which is a vision of the future created by one event leading to another that has originated from a certain point. Predictions are future events, which are computed with cabalistic calculations that lead to very exacting results. Correctly done predictions come to pass with absolute accuracy, for they are based on established fact and proceed to a certain effect that must take place. Prophecies are different, though, and are generally a warning function, only showing the end effect which would result from certain facts if no change was initiated in time. If there is no change, then the prophecy becomes a prediction and will surely come to pass. Prophecy is also variable according to the free will of man, and so consequently is not nearly as accurate as a prediction. Therefore, it is not certain that a prophesied event will take place since it will always come out a little different because of the intervention of man. This means that prophecy only demonstrates one possibility, and generally is nothing more than a warning. When it comes to prophecy involving specific people, you must be very careful. Prophecy should never be clearly revealed to an individual because then they will make changes in their actions to avoid certain events, causing their evolution to be faulty. This means that a person's evolution must happen without any knowledge of prophetic events so that their evolution will run its course naturally. Also, certain events of a prophecy must be kept secret so as to not cause fear, hate, or disfavor, etc. Those who offer prophecy should be careful because their knowledge of events may be inaccurate, causing unnecessary fear and distress for the individual. In the case of prophecy for individuals, certain information within the prophecy should be vague, so the person receiving the prophetic information will have to struggle to understand it. Billy does not make any attempt to explain the prophecies in any more detail, for he believes only a person who can understand the truth himself when it is given to him in hidden form is able to bear and tolerate the consequences of the knowledge. Just as the stomach can only digest digestible foods, the human understanding can only take in and comprehend that which is digestible, otherwise, it is overpowered and becomes insane or delirious. Remember, the future is not fixed, but is only a projection from a fixed point. The purpose of future predictions is to warn us of the future we are causing to happen, it does not have to happen this way. Once we quit waiting for someone else to create our future for us, once we stop relying on a god, a myth, or some religious leader to save us and learn to take 100% responsibility for ourselves and our future, we can create the kind of peace we all want. It won't come any other way. We all have the ability to create our own future. This is the end of part 16. For more information about the Pleiadian mission, please visit thepleiadianmission.com. Again please visit thepleiadianmission.com. Also subscribe and share this video. Let the whole world know the truth. Thank you for listening. Remember that knowledge is power. Please, don't be left in the dark. Please continue to part 17 in the next video.